praise God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Uh, I want to apologize that this teaching on Holy Communion was not able to be aired yesterday because of the problem of power. But I thank God that today we are here and we shall be able to wear it as planned. Praise God. Uh, this morning we want to share uh, or learn about what is Holy Communion and who should partake it and the benefits of Holy Communion. My name is Benjamin Mwaura. This morning I'm born again. I love the Lord as my personal savior. Our teaching this morning will be taken from uh, the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 14 to 20. And then we shall also look at uh, 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 17 to 34, apart from other books maybe that I may quote. Uh, in the book of Luke, chapter 22, and verses 14 to 20, it says, And when the hour came, he reclined at a table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have honestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourself. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. First uh, Corinthians chapter 11 and verses and verses 17 to 34, it says, "But in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for." the better but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I believe it in part. For this must be functions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper that you eat. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself, then so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning, the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judge ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, by the road we are, in, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is angry, let him eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for judgment about the other things. I will give directions when I come. As we have read from the first book of uh, Gospel of Luke, that's where uh, we see the first Holy Communion started. And as I said, we are looking at what is the Holy Communion. And Holy Communion has other words. One of them is the Lord's Supper. So when we talk of the Lord's Supper, we are also talking of the Holy Communion. We also talk of the Lord's Table. Uh, we can also hear people talk of the Holy Eucharist, and the Eucharist means dance giving. And others talk of divine liturgy, and others talk of the Mass, and also the Great Offering. And Holy Communion, per se, is an act of worship. In a simple term, we can also say, is the breaking and eating of bread to symbolize Christ's body broken for us and drinking wine to remember the blood he shed for our sins. It is also the service of Christians' worship at which bread and wine are consecrated and shared. So we are saying it's a service, Christian service, where bread and wine are consecrated and then shared by the Christians. Also communion means common. It is also known as Eucharist, to which I had said is to give thanks, and this refers to the last supper, and communion is a continuing ceremony of the entire body of Christ. So, um, the Lord's Supper con consists of some elements. And these elements of the Holy Communion of the Ro or the Lord's Supper or the Lord's Table are mainly two. One of them is the bread and the other one is the wine. It's the symbol of expressing our sharing the divine nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, why do we have these two elements? The two elements, one, the bread, um, if, if we go back to the word in the, in the book of Luke, and uh, verse 14, we hear Jesus saying that Seto, we hear Jesus saying, uh, chapter 22, verse 14 of Luke, we hear, And when the hour came, he reclined at the table and apostles with him, and he said to them, I have honestly, other versions say, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. So, as it is the practice of the children of Israel, in remembrance of the deliverance that God had given him 
when they were in the land of slavery in Egypt, the children of Israel usually celebrated the Passover. And this time, Jesus is having the last supper with his disciples. Is It was a day when the children of Israel were supposed to celebrate the Passover. And Jesus said that he was eagerly waiting to have this Passover feast with the children of, uh, with his disciples because this was going to be his last to partake when he was in this flesh. Praise God. And for us to understand better, it's important for us to go back where we talk of the Passover feast where the children of Israel used to celebrate. Remember the children of Israel were in slavery in the land of Egypt and God had sent Moses to go and lead the children of Israel from slavery to Canaan. And when he went and presented himself to Pharaoh and asked Pharaoh to release the children of Israel, Pharaoh refused. And Moses had to perform so many miracles so that Pharaoh could allow the children of Israel to be released from the land of Egypt. And it reached a time when the Lord decided, if we go back to uh, the book of uh, Exodus, chapter 12, we read of uh, if we start from verse 1, let me just go through it for us to better understand what I want to say. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a ram according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a ram, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat. You shall make your account for the ram. Your ram shall be without blemish. A male a year old, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their rams at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, it, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it with your belt, fastened your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste, it is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So as I was saying, this was the kind of Passover that the Lord had ordered the children of Israel to partake or to arrange and do this. And it was to be done by all the households of Israel. And this is because God had organized to strike the first bone of all Egyptians, neither human nor a beast. You can imagine what uh, a terrible death there was in Egypt for all the firstborn of human and even of the beast. That means the cows, the goats, 
all that belongs to the Egyptians. And God was doing this so that he could deliver the children of Israel. And we, as we have gone through, we read that they were supposed to look for a one-year lamb that is blemish of a goat or of, of a sheep. And then they were also uh, to eat the flesh that night roasted on fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. So we are talking of this feast that had many things that the Israelites were supposed to eat. They were supposed to eat the meat, they were supposed to eat the unleavened bread, and they were supposed, uh, uh, this unleavened bread was supposed to be spread, uh, to be put uh, bitter herbs. And when Jesus was talking to his, uh, when, when he was sharing the last supper with his disciples, he took bread. I can imagine that the meat was there as the instructions were. The bitter herbs were there. The bread, the bread was there and also the wine. But he took bread. He took bread and wine. Why did he had to take bread and wine and made these to be elements of the Holy Communion or of the Rasti Supper. This is because bread is so common. If you go to any kiosk or any shop, you will not miss bread. You go to any supermarket, you will not miss bread. And therefore it means bread is so readily available that anyone who would want bread would be able to get it. That means Jesus chose bread to be a symbol of his body because he was to be readily available for anybody who would want, uh, would want to have him. He also chose the wine that he gave to his disciples. And remember also the Passover used to be celebrated every year by the children of Israel, even after the deliverance, in remembrance of what God did to them, to deliver them from the hand of Pharaoh and to deliver them from slavery. So as the Lord took bread, broke it and gave thanks and broke it and gave to his disciples, took wine and also gave to his disciples. He commanded them to continue doing this. Praise God. And as I was saying, bread is so much available, is so, uh, it's readily available wherever you'd want to get bread, you'll get bread. And this symbolized his body that as he was breaking it, it symbolized his body that was going to be crushed on the cross. The wine represented the blood that is going to shed. As uh, you know, before you get the wine, the fruits, uh, the grapes that are crushed and then they are squeezed until the wine comes out, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ was to undergo. He was to be crushed so that his blood would be shed on Calvary so that we would be saved. And, and the Lord instructed the children of Israel to continue doing this until he comes back. Until he comes back. Praise God. So I want to, for us to better understand the significance of this uh, Holy Communion of the Rose Table and the Passover, 
There are similarities that I want us to look at. One of them is the Passover lamb. Remember, God had instructed Moses and Aaron to instruct the children of Israel to take a blemish, a one-year-old lamb that is blemish. That was the one that was to be used in the feast of the, uh, the Passover. And when we come to the time when, uh, when Jesus was celebrating this Passover, he was about to be, to be crucified. And remember, he is the sinless son, the blemish son of God. He took the place of the lamb that he went to the cross once and we shall no longer need to slaughter these uh, goats and lambs again for our redemption. Because Jesus' blood and Jesus' body, it is enough. And also Jesus Christ was blameless. He was a son without blemish like the lamb that was blemish. So we take the lamb as a symbol representing Jesus Christ. We also take the unleavened bread that stood for the body of Christ that was without sin. And when we look at the Passover, the children of Israel were told to smear the blood of the lamb at the doorpost and at the lintel of the door. The lintel is the frame, the top frame of the door. That is the lintel. And it was supposed, they were supposed to smear the brand of the lamp on these two door frames and the lintel. And this symbolizes the cross of Christ the cross where Christ was hanged, where Christ was crucified. When you take the lintel of the door and the two uh, frames, you join them together, you bring them together, and you lower, you lower the lintel or the upper frame at the top of the door, you bring it a bit lower, it makes the cross where Jesus Christ was crucified even because of our sins. And the last supper that the children of Israel had before the deliverance from the land of Egypt represents the last supper before Jesus was crucified on the cross for our own deliverance. Not for the deliverance of the children of Israel, but for us all who would come to him uh, seeking forgiveness from him, he would be delivered. And, this, and the Passover, the children of Israel were supposed to celebrate it every year. And then the Lord also, he had told uh, the, uh, the, the, the disciples to do this as often to remember in his remembrance. Buona Sifiwe. So whenever we do this, whenever we have the Holy Communion, we remember the salvation. We remember the death of Christ on the cross that he shed, that he suffered, even because of our sins. We look at who should partake of the Holy Communion. There are so many controversies about who should partake of the Holy Communion. And this has even divided churches because of who should it take or how should it be taken. Uh, those who should partake of the Holy Communion, there are people who should have faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, they must be born again. And there are people who must be forgiven. They are forgiven their sins and they have also forgiven others. When, when we went through the first 
book of Corinthians chapter 11, we saw how Paul was telling the church of Corinth because he had found out they had problems when it came to the Lord's Supper. And he said, uh, if we go back to the First Corinthians and chapter 11, First uh, Corinthians chapter 11, and we look at, uh, and, and we look at verses 28, the Bible says, let a person examine himself, then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. We are saying the person who should partake is somebody who is born again, person who has examined himself, because apart from being born again, we are able to sin. We, are, have, we have not been glorified. We do sin, and therefore we are supposed to examine ourselves before we partake of the Lord's table or of the Lord's uh, supper. We need to appreciate others. We need to be respectful. If we are taking the Holy Communion, we need to mend our ways with those whom we have collided with. Those whom we have sinned against, we need to go and mend our ways. Tuerewane na awa tusikizame kabla ya kuja kupokea meza ya buwana. We need also, if we examine self, examine ourselves, and find that we have any problem or any sin, we need to repent and confess so that we are clean before we come to receive the Holy Communion. We need also to have the right intention. We need also to have the right motive before we come to take the Holy Communion. Because as we have heard from the Church of Corinth, there were some who were just taking it to feed themselves. As we heard, it's that some were going out hungry and others were going out drunk. So we should have the right intention and the right motive. And the right intention is for us to remember the work that the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. It is required that we should examine our lives, repent of our sins, and be in love with others and in charity with all other people. If, if we don't do this, the consequences are not good. The consequences are not good. The Bible says, uh, if you read from Verse 29, it says, For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. Verse 30, That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. Paul is telling the Corinthians, the church of Corinthians, that they should be very, very careful when they approach the Lord's table. And he's telling them, this is because, uh, because you have not discerned yourself, you have not self-examined yourself, this is why some of you are weak, some of you are sick, and some of you have met early deaths that have got no explanations, even because of not discerning what you are doing when you come to the Lord's table. Brethren, Lord's table is a serious matter. Others even come late when already the service has started and they come and join the queue and partake of the Holy Communion. When you do that, do you have respect for what is happening? Brethren, this is something that can bring to us weaknesses, can bring to us illnesses, and even 
as the Bible said, First uh, Corinthians verse 30, that and even some have died. Bona sifiwe. I may not be able to over, to overemphasize the benefits of having the Holy Communion, but a few I want to say that Holy Communion it is incurable sicknesses. It is it gives life, and when you do this, you redwell in God because as you remember. As you continue remembering the work of Christ on the cross, you also remember that he is soon coming for us and even to take the charge. So it keeps you awake that the Lord Jesus is coming back to take us. It also opens closed doors. It brings revival to an individual and even the body of Christ at large. So, brethren, let me remind you that God takes communion very seriously because it cost him the life of his only son. To purchase us and redeem us from the, from the curse of the law, you are saved not by keeping the law, but by by what Jesus Christ has done for you at Calvary. His victory over death by the ordinance of the Holy Communion. It also reminds us of his suffering and assures us that the amount of love Jesus has for us. So as we come to partake the Holy Communion, it reminds us of his suffering and the love that he showed us. And therefore, my dear brethren, we need to be very careful as when we come to partake of the Holy Communion. And as I said, the symbol of the body is because the Lord Jesus Christ is readily available for any one of us who would want him. Those who have not received Jesus Christ through the teaching of the Holy Communion, it is good that you receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of your life, so that as you continue even partaking of the Lord's table of the Holy Communion, you are reminded of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done on the cross. Thank you, and God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to pray this morning that many of us, Lord, have problems even because we had not known the Lord at times we come to partake of the Lord's table without examining ourselves. How I pray that you help your people to examine themselves and Lord to take, a, to take a new direction in regards to the Holy Communion. I pray the Lord you continue opening our hearts and even our mind and our souls. The Lord you may continue, you may continue to expound this word in our hearts so the Lord we may be better each and every day. Thank you, Lord, even for the work that you did on the cross to die for our sins, the blood you shed that cleanses every sin and every difficulty and every illness. Lord, we pray that you gonna even meet us at the point of our need. Thank you for each one of us who is watching us at home. We pray that, Lord, you bless them mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen.